Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, everyone, to another incredible, exciting, force-filled podcast of the Real Film Nerds. I'm your host in snowy, blistery Prescott, Arizona, and with me as always, my good buddy on the East Coast, the man that is rocking a Metallica shirt as we record episode 152 about Star Wars, Mysterious Mike Talent. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I know this is a special episode for uh, for you, Matt. So should we just get into it? What do, what do you want to do? Do you want to change anything on this one? I want to do whatever makes you happiest, Mike, because you're wearing a Metallica shirt when you should be wearing a Star Wars shirt. And I'm thoroughly disappointed. Now I know what to get you for uh, next Christmas and your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay well i'm sorry i'm sorry man this is just what i wore today it's okay i'll let it slide do, do, do you wear uh star wars every day that you go see it like so uh, how many times have you seen it and did you wear a star wars shirt every time you went and saw it yes and yes that's not a number though is it no no are, are you a politician now yes actually you should answer with a question does that degrade me as a Star Wars fan if I did? <laughs> there. I was trying to figure out a good question to answer. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So I've been slacking because, uh, and both of us have been, well, not slacking. I've been very ill all week. So that's why we didn't get the podcast recorded. I was down south and I caught the plague from someone or someone's offspring at work, most likely. And it's put me down pretty much all week. So Christmas was good. It was all right. Mike, how was your Christmas? Uh, Christmas was uh, really good. It was fun. My, mine was fine other than being sick. So, But I did get to see Star Wars three times. Okay. I saw it twice on opening night. And I think I discussed that in our pre rise of skywalker episode eight podcast right yeah i believe you said you had tickets to see it twice yes yep i went at six o'clock with a bunch of the blue milk guys there was we took up an entire row like the complete row there was i don't know i think 15 of us 16 of us something like that oh that's awesome and then i went to the uh game on uh comic book shop and games and stuff at the mall here their private showing with uh, my buddy Josh, who owns the comic book shop, and watched it again. And it, literally, I walked out the theater. I went to the bathroom. Josh was there. He said, dude, it's getting ready to start. And we went into the other theater. It's perfect. Wow. Wow. Perfect no, that, 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 that's awesome. So you saw it with a bunch of good people twice. I bet that really changed the experience. How was the third time? The third time I took my mom and my nephew, who had already seen it, and there was a lot of uh, young people because we went on Sunday night back home at your old employer, which I'm not a huge fan of what they're doing, by the way, Mike. They are turning into AMC. Oh, yeah? What are, what are they doing? They had over 30 minutes of ads and trailers. 30 minutes? Over 30 minutes. So so if the showtime was at 2.30, the movie didn't actually start till 3.00? Our showtime was at 8.15. The movie did not actually click on until almost 8.50. Wow. Man, no, that's pretty desperate. That was really bad. And I was like, if I would have known, I would have done like what everybody else in the theater did and showed up 20 minutes late. Now, now, are they on a reserved seat system? Yes. Uh, they implemented oh. the rever reserved seat system uh this year i believe from according to my uh, nephew okay all right so the third time it was good it was uh, a lot of uh military and teenagers and things like that it was on i think sunday night monday night something like that it was still good a lot of the same reactions i experienced in the uh two previous showings a lot of the you know same kind of things that we will definitely get into when we get to the spoiler part but uh, yeah, I enjoyed myself. I know I will definitely be seeing it in the theaters at least one, maybe two more times 
uh, depends on time off and how much snow we get because it is snowing here right now. Woo! Nice, man. Nice. Yeah, you think it's going to close work? Like, are you going to get a snow day or as should we call it a Star Wars day? I would be okay with that. Yeah, I would love a nice little Star Wars day. I would just sit here and watch, you know, the wars, my beloved the wars. Although, you know, one thing not to get too off topic, because, you know, I do this all the time. And that's why you're here. You're supposed to keep me in check, Mr. Talent. Okay. But uh, the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I introduced my mom and my nephew, Michael, to the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and they powered through the first season in two days. And they're like, uh, we don't have Amazon Prime. Can you please leave your thing logged in so we could, I'm like, fine. They are obsessed with it. Oh, no. Uh, the Maisel is really awesome. Maggie and I enjoy watching that quite a bit. And so it is an amazing show. I hadn't heard about it until just about the second season came out. So it was late last year. And uh, we watched the first season and then it almost immediately started the second season, which was awesome. But then we had to wait a year for this third season. And man, does it deliver. I really like that show. It's super creative. Don't and spoil it. Don't spoil it the, because I have not watched the third season all the way through. I'm about halfway. No, no. The the sets in the show, this is just general stuff, are just incredible. That first episode in the hangar was beautiful. I really like that. That was really neat. Really well done. Yeah. I, I don't know what they do to, uh, to, to, to get all that stuff working, but... We, we can't stay on this topic too long. I know. Now. Not to get too off topic, but I definitely feel... That, uh, you know, it's we're coming to the end of the decade, and I feel that Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, along with Watchmen and Chernobyl and Silicon Valley, are some of the best shows of the past 10 years. They're just incredible. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, M- Maisel, Maisel's awesome, man. Definitely, definitely incredible. Incredible scripts, everything. All right, Mike. Well... Shall we do it? You want to start giving us the uh, rundown for the current last Star Wars film, Episode <laughs> 9, The yes. Rise of Skywalker? Because you know it's not the last. There's going to be a lot more coming down the pike because you know how Disney likes to take a horse and beat that horse and then beat it some more. And then when there's nothing left but ground and bloody mess, still beat it. Yes, I, I do realize that, Matt. And I know there will be more Star Wars movies. I just don't know if they will have all the Skywalker family or I, I don't know if it's going to be in the same vein. But we'll, we'll see. It doesn't matter. For right now, it's the last movie. And uh, the the director is back, J.J. Uh, Abrams. And screenplay was uh, Chris Toro. Uh, J.J. Abrams' story was by Derek Connolly, Colin Trevero, Chris Toro, and J.J. Abrams. And this was starring Carrie Fisher, Adam Driver, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac. And for the story, the First Order and the Resistance battle once again. Will the Resistance rise? Uh, General Organa, Poe, Ray, Finn are all back for their final Final installment in this epic saga. Did you write that one too, Mike? Yeah. Dude, you're getting better. You're getting really better. I'm going to start making you write the the show notes. I keep threatening that. I'm going to make you do it. Yeah. No, I, I'm trying to, 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 to do a little bit more, man. You, you, should, anyway. you should type that up and send that to me, and I'll put that in there instead of the IMDB one, which is one sentence. It's after Palpatine mysteriously returns, the Resistance faces the First Order once more in the final chapter of the Skywalker Saga. Yeah, yours is better. <laughs> maybe you should submit it to IMDb. Wow, wow, yeah. Maybe I should. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, Alright, Mike, so how how are we doing your structure? What are we starting out with? So, so now we're just going to talk about technical things, Matt. Like, Dude, it was great. Like, yeah, the action um, was incredible. The sets were great. The dude, Carrie Fisher. I mean, that was incredible, absolutely incredible. I'm just gonna leave it at that, without you know getting too much more in depth. But I thought what they did with her, 
was really, really astounding and well done. Yeah, um, the the sets were good. Um, I I liked so J.J. Abrams has this this uh, tendency to have these lens flares. It's like one of his characteristic things, and he only had a couple in this. It wasn't too lens flare crazy, so it was good. Sounds like you're disappointed. No, no, I thought it was good. I'm sure there's probably an internet meme uh, already out there that's like the J.J. Abrams version of the trailer, and it'll have like a lens flare every second. Well, what was that that like really was really bad? It Was it the first Star Trek? I think it was the first Star Trek. Yeah, it was the first Star Trek. It was like every two seconds there was a lens flare. It was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's one of his things. I don't know. Like, it's okay... Every once in a while, but it like seems like sometimes he he liked to overuse it or or those shots. I don't know. It's, it's it seemed artificial, so I think it was just put in there. All right, Mike. So what's next? <laughs> All right, Matt. So uh, I'm are just you w- moving us along, man? Moving us along. I want to spoil the hell out of this. All right. So what <laughs> what are you what are you drinking, man? Ah. <sighs> Oh, wow. You're already jumping into that. Wow. Holy bejesus. Well, Mike, thanks for asking. I got a special drink. I have it in the entire bottle. I flashed it at you uh, earlier another time. Let me see. There we go. Oh, yeah. It is from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. It is their delightful bourbon cream. Ooh, that sounds good, man. If you have never had it, it's a little. It's not like an expensive bottle, but it's not cheap either. I I definitely recommend it. I like it just over a little bit of ice, but I, I'm sure it would go great in like coffee. It's it's very reminiscent of like uh, Bailey's kind of, but it's oh bourbon. all right, yeah. Instead, it's bourbon though. You know, instead of uh, Irish cream. So, all right, Mike, go ahead, take off your Extendo beer koozie and let us know which IPA it is today. All right, so this is a New England IPA, and uh, this is Captain Lawrence Brewing Company Powder Dreams. Is it hoppy? Yeah, uh, you know, with New England's, they're kind of like this juicy flavor, and this one's okay, but it's a little too bitter, if you ask me. What? Something too bitter for you? Well, for the style. Oh, okay. I was going to say, New England is supposed to be more like... Less like really bitter and more like juicy. It's it's kind of a different emphasis on the flavor. I mean, I was gonna say because you know we've had this discussion. That's why I don't drink IPAs is because I'm bitter enough without them. Ah, yes, yes. That's that's very good. That's I like what, that, man. That's what life has done to me. <laughs> yeah, so I I drink them to maintain like a, a smooth bitterness. Otherwise, I'd be too happy. Is that what it is? I can see that. You're you're too pleasant if you don't drink enough bitterness. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad we got that out of the way. Okay, Mike, so what's next? Story? Structure? Acting? <laughs> all right, I don't all right, remember. Man. We so, got to write this down one of these days. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, uh, you know, Matt, why, why don't we just go into the MCU? You want to go that far? Okay, well, before we get there, I want to talk about the script. Okay. I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to go into it, but I will say that I think the script is kind of a mess on this film. And that has nothing to do with J.J. Abrams. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. I think he did the best he could with what he was given coming out of The Last Jedi and the original script writer and director for this film, uh, Colin uh, Trevorrow, who got fired as well. So JJ inherited a giant mess. I think he did great with what he had, but it still was a hot mess. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure you will elaborate on this more. I don't know. The, to to me, without, without getting into spoilers or anything, this movie flowed better, and I, I, I like that. So speaking about flowing, no, that doesn't flow at all. Doesn't flow at all. See, you're laughing. You're not even like like doing it in the mic. Go ahead, laugh at me. It's fine. People do it all day. <laughs> there you go. That's better. Okay. So speaking about not a good uh, segue into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, Mike, 
how does Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Ah, oh, well, thanks for asking, man. Uh, this movie has Lupita Nyong'o, who is also in The Black Panther as Nikaya. Nice, dude. Good job. You got her name perfect. Oh, man. Woo. Yeah, she has a complicated name, and she, she owns up to it. But, you know, she is uh, Maz Kanata. I don't, I don't know what that means. That's the little chick with the eyeballs from Force Awakens, the glasses. She's uh, oh, yeah, Chewbacca's yeah, yeah. Yeah, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Or she calls herself Chewbacca's girlfriend. Yep. She voices Maz Kanata. Yep. Nice, dude. You're very, you're very on it, man. I, it's amazing how much I know about Star Wars, isn't it? Here, here's some trivia for you. Maz Kanata in Force Awakens was a digital character. In the Rise of Skywalker, she was a physical animatronic character for a lot of the scenes. Oh, do you know why they changed it? No, but it looked really good. Okay. Cool. All right, so Mike, does that mean we get to get into spoilers? Yes, Matt. That means you can get into spoilers. Woo! Star Wars! I mean, spoilers. <laughs> Star Wars spoilers. Woo! There we go. <laughs> okay, Mike, you go first. Because I know you probably are have this list of questions on your iPhone or iTablet or iWatch that you want to ask me. Uh, you know, not, not too much, Matt, but, uh, you know, I just want to start by saying this was a really, f th to me, this was fun, uh, return of the fun Star Wars movie without any like extra weird, crazy stuff, like weird casino missions or just, uh, weird, uh, spaceship chasing scenes that didn't make any sense. Like, so I don't know. I, I like this better. Just on an overall perspective. I was trying to look up and see if we ever reviewed The Last Jedi, and we did not, Mike. We never did, because the podcast didn't exist yet. That's true, man. The podcast came out the following year. Well, The Last Jedi was released in December. Our podcast started in February of the next year, so we never got around to reviewing The Last Jedi. We will have to do that as a legacy cast in the future, because I was honestly trying to figure out how many reels I had given it. I'm like, I had never rated it. Because I will not beat around the bush. Out of all the Star Wars films, all of them, including the prequels that a lot of people hate, Episode Eight for me, is the worst Star Wars movie made to date. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty rough. There are a lot of things I do enjoy about The Last Jedi. We will go into that. On another podcast, when we talk about it and the things, it's still a Star Wars movie, but it is my least favorite of all. And I liked this film just because J.J. went in and corrected or righted the ship on a lot of the things that Ryan Johnson screwed up. Now, there are some risks that Ryan Johnson took that I did like that J.J. corrected that I didn't like, but I didn't hate either. Like, okay, well, we're in spoilers. I can just jump right into it. One thing I did like is how Ray's parents were not known. I thought that was a good thing. And then making Ray's parents Palpatine related was kind of, I don't want to say it's a cop out. I mean, he had to do something for the story, which I understand. But I like the idea that anybody could be a Jedi, that it was going back to the originals, you know, where it's not midichlorians and it's not who you're related to. It's if you're force sensitive or not. And anybody could be a force sensitive. And I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was a little bit like, really? She's like Palpatine's granddaughter? Okay. Right. Yeah. It's kind of a it's kind of a mess. And one of that's one of the messes I was talking about. And one of the theories that's floating around is that um supposedly anakin skywalker was an immaculate conception by palpatine you never find out who anakin's father is so the bloodline of skywalker supposedly comes from palpatine 
supposedly this is just a theory just a theory there's no proof behind this that ray's parents are not blood related to palpatine like they didn't like like palpatine wasn't around running around laying pipe all right i I don't know why not (laughs) he should have been he's got a lot of power he's got a lot of money might as well you know but supposedly they were just a random married couple that again the immaculate conception kind of thing happened again and she happened to you know that way that's a theory that's a theory there's no proof or anything behind that which i'm not a huge fan of that theory wow okay all right um another thing i didn't like about uh this one uh jj gave us more characters that we did not need i really don't think we needed that new chick that rides on the horses and i love carrie russell i liked her character a lot but honestly we didn't need her oh Oh, I I kind of liked I I, I liked the, the 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 woman behind the eyes that yeah. that was Carrie Russell's but, character. Yeah, right? Carrie Russell. I said Fisher, didn't I? I messed that up. Sorry. No, 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 no. You said Carrie. Did Russell. I say Russell? Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Carrie no, no, Russell. Uh, I love Carrie Russell. I liked the character a lot. I liked her story. I liked how they were expanding and making Poe like better by having her in there and having her, the backstory of the spice running and all that stuff. I would like to have seen more of that and more added in there, but again we didn't need her to finish out the story, but it does help Poe. Okay. okay. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Mike. No. <laughs> so, uh, some of the things I liked in this, uh, new, uh, movie were the, the, the lightsaber battles, uh, were, were way better. And there was many more of them. And I liked that a lot. It was, and it was good. I agree. There was a decent, like the big lightsaber battle between Kylo and, uh, Ray was very good. I like that a lot, but I have to say one of my favorite lightsaber battles of the entire series is the battle in Last Jedi. Now, the choreography is a giant hot mess like it is. A lot of guys miss their cues and screw it up, but how it was shot and how they fought back to back against all the guards and how pretty it was. I really like that. That's one of the few things that I liked from The Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Um, Matt, did you uh, think they they lightened up the humor? It wasn't too much. There's a little bit, but just a little bit. Oh, there was a decent amount of humor in this. But what I liked about it is this is classic Star Wars humor. It is not forced. You know, uh, Abrams really relied on the droids, which I thought was great. He really brought C-3PO back and kind of into his own, which I thought was fantastic. C-3PO has always been a goof. He's always been kind of the comedic, you know, standby. And I love that J.J. really went out with it. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that was cool. I, You're thinking. I, you know, You're thinking. You yeah, can do it, I'm, Mike. I'm, I'm tr- yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to... Um, there was one part in the movie, Matt, that I'm going to ask you about because it was a little weird for me. Fire away, brother. And that was, uh, the Ray and Kylo scene where... Oh, Lord, don't say it. Don't say it, Mike. When they kiss? Yeah. That was garbage. Well, that... I hated that. That was so bad. It's so cringeworthy. Yeah, what? So cringy, dude. That was... Oh, no. They could have passed on that. Yeah, well, th- that part, and then just the overall, like, I mean, I I know we're in the spoiler sections, but I still don't want to give away too much. The The circumstances that happen immediately after the kiss, that was weird to me because of what had just happened prior to the kiss, if that makes sense. Are you talking about the disappearing act? Yes. Okay. That's still giving it away, though. All right. All right. I'm going to, it's going to, I'll spoil the hell out of it because I'm going to have to. This kind of one thing that I wasn't a huge fan of was how easy Kylo's redemption back into Ben Solo and being a Jedi went in this film. Darth Vader's redemption in the original trilogy was a lot harder and a lot more earned. He sacrificed himself to save Luke by throwing, picking up the Emperor and throwing him over into what we thought it was going to be his death. Kylo does kind of the same thing, but his redemption comes at the scene with a that I don't want to unveil, but there's a person in it. It's after the lightsaber fight with Ray. He wasn't even in the credits, so I'm just going to leave it at that because it was a great, great, you know, kind of cameo. Loved it. That's kind of when he goes from Kylo back to Ben Solo. 
but it's too quick. It's too easy. It's too simple for his redemption. And that whole thing started with Ray, you know, basically killing him and then saving him. And so when a Jedi is killed, they die just like everybody else. If you remember in Phantom Menace, Qui-Gon Jinn, uh, uh, when he died, he was burned on a, a big fire pit thingy. Yeah. Like the classic Vikings and all that kind of stuff. Well, later on, you find out that Qui-Gon Jinn kind of found out how to turn himself into the blue glowy, but not quite. He, You never see him as a blue glowy, but you hear him. When the Jedis learn how to do that, where they can turn themselves into a blue glowy, that's when their bodies go completely away. So it happened to uh, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It happened to Yoda. It happened to uh, Luke. It happened to Leia in this film. Spoilers again. And then when Kylo died, it happened to him. So basically, it means he was a Jedi and now he's a blue glowy, which I'm not a huge fan of because his redemption was way too easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did, uh, you know, speaking of other spoilers and things, I did like that they had Ray doing some training with uh, Force in this in this one, just, just to try and explain some of the stuff. And then uh, also seeing uh, Finn... Uh, acknowledging some force sensitivity and and some different things. So uh, I don't know. I I thought that was better. Excellent, excellent. Because JJ even teases Finn having a little bit of force force sensitivity in uh, uh the Force Awakens, just a tidge, but a little bit. You know, he keeps saying he has these feelings. Well, he has way harder feelings than this one, and that's JJ even came out and said publicly uh, after the premiere. Not like the Hollywood premiere, but after like the nationwide premiere, that there's that scene where uh, Finn says that he has to tell Ray something, and then they get sucked down into the sand. Yeah. Well, Finn is not telling Ray that he loves her. He's telling her that he is force sensitive, or he thinks he's force sensitive. Oh, okay, cool. According to JJ, so I thought that was pretty neat. I loved that they had training finally. The training honestly should have been in The Last Jedi, but of course, Ryan Johnson did what he wanted. And that's why this new trilogy has been such a hodgepodge. And, and Matt, being the super Star Wars fan that you are, do you think there was a lot of fan service in this to try and fix the story? I mean, obviously, you're kind of saying there is, but... That was one of my first things I said when I walked out of the theater the first time is that the, there was so much fan service. It's almost like annoying, which some of it was really, really good. And some of it I could have lived without, you know, it was just too, too, too much. Like I'll use one example. I liked it the first time I saw it. Now it's just kind of like, Oh really was when they present Chewbacca with his medal. And that's a callback to the original star Wars. It was. Because Chewbacca didn't get a medal. And it's just like, really? I mean, yeah, that first time you see it, you're like, oh, finally. He finally gets recognition. But then you're like, why? Why? It's 100% in there to make you go, oh, oh, yeah, Star Wars Episode Four, Right. Okay. All right. Um, And then, Matt, this was pretty weird to me, and I don't know exactly why it was in it. What's up with the random Ewoks? Okay, that's actually some nice little trivia I can tell you. That That's a callback to Return of the Jedi. They're going to all the different systems as they're celebrating. The random Ewoks are not quite that random. It is Endor, it is the Ewoks, and it is an Ewok we are familiar with from Return of the Jedi. Do you know his name, Mike? Oh, no. I, I mean, I think I know who plays him, but I, I don't know. What's the, don't what's know the name. actor's name, then? Oh, he's the dude who does the leprechaun and stuff. I can't think of his name, though. Yep. He's also the dude that plays Willow. Yep. Come on, Mike. (sighs) I'll get it eventually. As soon as the internet loads up. As soon as the internet loads up. Come on, Mike. It's Warwick Davis. Yeah. Oh, man. I've actually actually seen him uh, at Star Wars. Uh... Star Wars event in Disney World before uh, I went a few years ago. You lucky bastard. All right. So Warwick Davis, that's Wicket 
from Return of the Jedi, which he was a young, not a uh, not a young kid, but he was a kid in Return of the Jedi. He played Wicket alongside Carrie Fisher. He reprises his role, and standing next to him is another little um, uh, teddy bear creature. I'm forgetting the name. Ewok. Because I hate oh, those geez. stupid things. I hate those stupid things with a passion. You don't like Ewoks? No, I hate them. I think they're freaking ridiculous. But this is this is a nice, you know, thing. Oh, and uh, Wicket's full name is Wicket W. Warwick. The young, okay. the the young Ewok standing next to him is Warwick Davis's son. Oh, that's cool. So there's a the little bit of trivia. But yeah, I'm it's sorry, just I forgot. A, Warwick Davis's name. No, it's all good. It's just a callback to uh, uh, episode six, Return of the Jedi. Okay. Okay, Mike, let's go. I want more questions. Are you done? Um, I I think that's the majority of the questions I had. Um, I I guess I can't reiterate em- enough how much I enjoyed this film just so much more than the last one. The overall, I don't know. It just it it had that kind of star wars fun feel to it uh and the last one didn't really have that yeah it's the classic fast action star wars one of the things that i thought was great that i really did not like about the last jedi and they've done it before in the past in other star wars films successfully but it did not work for me in the last jedi and not with this trilogy is that in the last jedi all the main characters kind of went their separate ways. JJ brought them all back together. You got Poe, you got Finn, you got Ray, you got Chewbacca, you got C-3PO, you got R2-D2 all rocking and rolling together for the majority of this movie. And I loved that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that I, I don't know. Maybe that's part of the reason that I liked it more. It just, it just felt better. Dude, it's a flat out better, better film. I'm sorry. It is. JJ, you saved Star Wars. Thank you, JJ. We love you. Yeah. Um. I. I, I don't know. How's it doing in the box office, man? I haven't seen the latest numbers. Uh. I don't know. I. I didn't look. I looked on Sunday to see how it did. It did less than Force Awakens, but I think it was on par with the Last Jedi. I think it was around two hundred fifty mil over the weekend. Okay. I know All it right. had one of the biggest selling tickets or biggest selling movies on christmas day at like 32 million just on christmas day wow no that's awesome so i'm not sure what it's up to now but i think it's doing well i don't know if it's going to hit the level of force awakens because force awakens was really something special it really was i mean it, it had been over 10 years since we had a star wars film and everyone wanted to see what they were going to do everyone wanted to see yeah, yeah, it looks like currently it's at 259 million domestic and 517 million worldwide. That's pretty good. That's really good. I don't know if it's going to get to the point of Endgame or like I said Force Awakens, but or even Avatar. I mean Avatar's a monster. But I I think, you know, as long as it does better than the last Jedi, it'll be worth it. Yeah. Definitely. So, Mike, what did you think of Babu Frick? Who? Babu Frick? What? You don't know you don't remember Babu Frick, the little the little dude that was messing with C three PO's melon. Uh oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. little creature. Uh I thought he was okay. Just okay? I thought it was hilarious. I loved it. I thought it was so funny. Okay. Especially when he cool. pops up at the end. He has no reason to be in a space battle and he just pops up because he wanted to go. He's like, ah, I wanna I'll go for a ride. What about um did you like the 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 one like little droid that they kind of like No, Dio? Yeah, that that was Bring back. Dio was a waste, man. That was a waste of a character. He didn't do shit. Kind of seemed like a claptrap from a certain game we play. Yeah, kind of. He kind of was like claptrap, wasn't he? But no, I not to shame Dio, but I think Dio was 100% thrown into this movie just so they can have another droid toy to sell. Oh. All right. That's disappointing. And I will buy it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. I never bought a BB-8. They're freaking expensive, those those Spheros. Yeah, they're they're expensive, man. Yeah. Well, they're pretty good, though. Yeah, I no, mean... they're like exactly like how they work in the movie. It's amazing. But, you know, they're like $200. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's a whole lot of ramen for me. A whole lot. <laughs> yeah, that is. Man. Okay, so you want to hear some of my gripes? 
Yeah, yeah. Tell 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 us. I'll try not to get into too many, but uh, I I wasn't a huge fan of how they retconned Palpatine's death, and they never really explained it. They said, "Oh, cloning or dark magic," and of course, a Hobbit tells us, "Yeah, that makes sense." I, I'm not sure. Like, is he a clone? Is he? raised from the dead is he a zombie is he zombie palpatine jj we need a little more clarification if you're you're going the cloning route that's fine as i brought up in the pre star wars that was one of my guesses is that was palpatine was going to be a clone because that's what they did in the books they cloned vader and they cloned palpatine but i would have liked an answer on that i'm not a huge fan of the sith world like i don't understand like where all that came from and how they built all those Star Destroyers and who are all the minions in robes that are sitting there watching them. I like to think that it's the like Sith from the old and they're just like spirits hanging out. They're not like actual Sith people. Cause if you go back into the, into the, uh, the world of the Jedi and the Sith, the more Jedi and the more Sith there are, the less powerful the individuals are, the less powerful the force powers are. And that's why uh, one of my favorite book trilogies is called Darth Bane series. There's a book in it called The Rule of Two. He's the one that came up with the creation of only having two, a master and apprentice on the dark side, because then they get all the power in two of them. Yeah, yeah. I thought there was only two Sith. I I was going to ask you a little bit about that arena scene because it's like what yeah what i don't like there? it and i don't understand it and it's no no and then where did all those people come from are they 501st like the sith troopers like the red troopers that look like stormtroopers in 501st armor but it's red are known as sith troopers so is the sith troopers and the sith imperial star destroyers part of the 501st or they are their own like a little ex- explanation on that would be good like how the hell did they build that many how the hell did they get the power the laser power of a death star in the size of an imperial star destroyer you know that's quite a bit of power for an imperial star destroyer you know explain shit like that i just give us a couple sentences or something jj yeah and what did you think about the uh the uh informant on the uh for the resistance Oh, yes. Well, I they had to do something with him because Ryan Johnson screwed that character up. He did. He screwed him up really bad because he made him a a joke in The Last Jedi. And so he was no longer threatening like he was in um, Force Awakens. And so they had to do something. And that way they kind of redeemed him and got rid of him at the same time while bringing in this new guy that was definitely more menacing. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. It was just, it was a little bit odd because he was supposed to be the informant, but I think he killed a bunch of the resistance in in The Last Jedi. Well, I don't think he was, I think it took after the events of The Last Jedi, specifically after the battle in the throne room was when he started thinking, oh, well, I don't trust this Kylo Ren guy. Ah, okay. All right. And that's when he kind of flipped. But again, the line behind him being the informant and being the spy is, you know, just that he just doesn't want ray to win which is ridiculous because they're on the same side but whatever i i I liked uh uh, i'm forgetting his name the actor they brought in to play the new um well he's not new uh let me see uh general pride uh richard e grant yeah general pride is a character from rebels so that's uh bringing in you know the 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 show into the movie and I liked that they brought him back in and he, you know, says how he served the emperor and all that stuff. And he's staying loyal to him and everything. And he was vicious, man. He was uh, Richard E. Grant did a great job. He was definitely more menacing than General Hux. But again, I think Hux could have been extremely menacing because he started out that way. He really did. But of course, Ryan Johnson, I got to be different. Yeah. Well, um, man, I, I, I know you could talk about this forever. Oh, dude, I could talk do- for hours, man. I really could. Do uh do you want to start getting to uh our our reels our readings? Uh, I don't. I I know where my reels are, Mike. I am curious where your reels are. And you know what? I was thinking. I don't know if we can call you mysterious Mike Talent anymore because you're not mysterious anymore. What? Why is that? Because you've done over 152 podcasts. <laughs> you're not mysterious <laughs> oh, oh. anymore. I mean, all right. You've even had we your. Do- you've even had your wife on here. Yeah, yeah. I guess they can just be Mike Talent. The real talent. In the in the talent family, 
Mags. It's true. Which we, dude, I seriously want her back on again. That was a lot of fun. I got a lot of positive feedback from that. A lot. That was that was a great podcast. <laughs> well, uh, I, I I think we can make that happen, Matt. I think that's doable. Thanks, Mags. If you're listening, thank you for coming on. I had a blast. You're a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. All right, Mike. How many reels do you give Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker? I'm going to give this four and a half reels. I really enjoyed this movie. What? Holy shit. How are you giving it a higher rating than me? That is impressive, Mike. That is impressive. I love it. Hey, you know, um, I I don't know. I Maybe it was just when I saw it. Maybe it was who I saw it with. But I, I just, I enjoyed this one a lot better, man. I enjoyed it. I saw the pic on the socials, man. You had quite a crew that went. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Quite a few people, yeah. Did you ask uh, uh, Vincent Vincent what he thought about the film? Uh, he, I, I think he liked it quite a bit, but we didn't get a, a, a good amount of time to talk to each other afterwards. Yeah, if things would have worked out better, it would have been great to have him on here too. But it's just, it's been a rough week, brother. It's been real rough for both of us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard, man. The holidays always, you, you get everything's different because you're doing stuff out of out of normal and you know and i get sick and it's not even from drinking terrible yeah yeah so all right i gotta give a shout out to real film nerd super fan lord steven of the house stock marthian for his rating he immediately asked me what i thought and told me what he thought he thinks this is the second best star wars movie ever made behind the original he gave it seven out of five reels Seven out of five. Yeah, how the hell do you do that? Yeah, like I think even when you're turning it up to the hypothetical 11, it's six. Right. He was going to 12. I'm like, no, it doesn't work like that. So anyways, all right, all right. I enjoyed this film quite a bit. But again, I am a critic. It is Star Wars, and I do know a lot of the lore. I know a lot of the stuff outside of the films, as you've alluded to many times, Mike. It's a, a passion of mine. It's... Not my favorite Star Wars film. It's definitely towards the top. It's definitely close to the top of the new trilogy. I mean, I I really liked Force Awakens. I really liked that movie. But I give it four out of five reels. Wow. Okay. So not too bad. Not too bad. No, that's still really respectable, man. Respectable. All right, Mike, so you want to talk about what we are going to try to review next week if we can. I was going to try and see it this evening, but I don't know if I'm going to make it. I might have to try and scramble on either Saturday morning before I go to the game or maybe Sunday morning. I don't know. But uh, we're going to see a serious movie with Mr. Adam Sandler, if you can believe it. Yeah, uh, I've actually seen a couple of his serious movies before. He did this movie called Punch Drunk Love uh, quite a few years ago, and it was really good. Yep, I watched that as well. Uh huh. Um, and then, uh, what was it, Spanglish? Spanglish was pretty serious. Spanglish was very serious, yeah. Yep. But it's the first time he's done a serious role in a long time, and people are saying possible Oscar nomination for Mr. Sandler. Really? You think? You think he'll... he'll, he'll... I, you know, it's the rumors. Uh, it's the rumors. The film we're talking about is Uncut Gems, people, by the way. Yeah. Um, and it looks really interesting. Looks like an interesting movie. And, you know, Adam Sandler can act really well. Uh, I think he's just always kind of stuck to what he's comfortable with. And that's been a lot of the comedy stuff. Well, I think it's just my personal opinion. He's kind of fallen apart in the past few years because he's kind of doing like over the top, like really over the top. Like some of my favorite films that he's done is stuff like happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, things like that where yes, they were slapsticky, but they weren't extremely over the top. They were smart in several ways. They were, they had their slapsticky comedy, but they also had points to the films where now, like, some of those ones he did for Netflix, like, they were just bad, man. They were just really bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They 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 weren't... The murder mystery one was okay. It wasn't great, but it was okay. So, yeah, I'm happy to see Adam Sandler get away from being behind the camera, let someone else direct it, 
and you do your job as an actor. I'm excited to see that. Again, it's been a while, but I, I would. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, this should be a different one to watch. We'll see if it gets some nominations. I mean, it's coming out right at the right time. Um, another movie, Matt, that I look forward to reviewing uh, fairly soon with you is uh, that movie 1917. So hopefully we'll get that. Yeah, I was really hoping to do that this week because it came out on Christmas. But the problem is it is extremely limited release in Christmas, which means that they released it in L.A. and New York, and that's it. Yeah, that that tends to be the way it is this time of year with the nominations. To be able to be nominated, they have to have it released, I think, in like two theaters, I think. Right. And so they do New York and L.A. always. So that gets its wide release, I believe, January 10th. And I am very very excited about that film i really want to see it there's not been a whole lot of world war one films done let alone really good world war one films and the way they shot it i'm really interested in and i mean uh, it's gonna be like birdman for war movies yeah i'm i'm definitely looking forward to seeing it and uh you can look forward to hearing about it from us uh not not too long. Yeah, not in the too distant future. Yeah. All right, Mike. Well, um, I think that's all I got. I definitely, definitely say go out and see Star Wars in the theaters at least five times. Okay. All right. Five times. So, I, I, you know, my count right now is I'm, I'm a little low, people. I only have one. So I've got to, I've got to watch it four more times, and I've got to watch Uncut Gems. So, whew, I got you a lot of movie watching. Next week, Star Wars is going to be out for a while. It's going to be out for a while. So you can go, you know, like once a week for the next month. All right. Oh, I thought I had to watch it every day until it was done. You could do that too. That's fine. No complaints on this side. But no, definitely, definitely, if you're even considering it, please go see this in the theaters. I enjoyed it. It's Star Wars. This is what Star Wars gave us, you know, these giant blockbusters and these giant dramas and. Yeah, just pay your tributes. I know I'm going to see it at least probably twice more, I think, if I can make the time, if I don't get too busy. Definitely at least once more. Mike, realistically, how many more times do you think you're going to see it in the theaters? Maybe once? I'll, I'll probably try and see it one more time, Yeah. Uh, depending on uh, how much time I have to do some things. But uh, yeah, I'll try and see it one more time. It's tough, man. It is a two and a half hour long movie, so it's tough. It's a lot of time to dedicate. But it was... I. I Honestly, not to brag, but I knew going in it was going to be tough. The double feature was going to be tough, but you know what? I did it. I did not get up and go pee during the movie, either showing. Oh, man, dude, that is tough. Although that pee between the showings, it was at least 15 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Nice, man. Very nice. All right. Well, Mike, let's let's call it a pod. I'll have you go ahead. Do your thing, Mike. Take us out of here. All right. uh, Thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, catch us on all the socials, uh, the Facebook, the Instagram. And uh, we will uh, catch you on our next pod. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. All right, I've been waiting for this interview all morning. Matt Hinshaw from the Real Film Nerds podcast in studio with me on Magic 99.1. Saw the new Star Wars movie twice last night. Can't wait because it's had, it's received bad reviews. And I think the critics are wrong. All right. Absolutely wrong. That's what I was hoping to hear this morning. You liked it, huh? Well, I have to warn everyone, I am a hardcore Star Wars fan. Yes. Like, hard, hardcore. I think that you'd be extra critical. Yeah. Yeah. I I hated The Last Jedi, and I still saw it five times. Okay. So, (laughs) if that gives you any idea. (laughs) Well, maybe you give it more of a break because you love it so much. Possibly. 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 Um, I enjoyed The Rise of Skywalker. I thought it was great. There were some things I didn't like. Yeah. There's a lot of fan service, a lot, like okay. a lot, so much it's almost kind of annoying. All right. Um, 
if you liked The Last Jedi, which most of the critics did, yeah. then you're not going to like this movie okay. because J.J. Abrams purposely corrects a lot of The Last Jedi in this oh, movie. Oh, wow. So I'm pretty sure Ryan Johnson's very angry about that and I think that's why the critics don't like it. Okay, well, so, tell me, was the the last movie, Last Jedi, mm-hmm. was that the one with the girl that came out, Luke Skywalker's daughter? Is that who that was? Well, I I'm can't not say a... who she is. Oh, it's not, oh. She's not Luke Skywalker's daughter. Oh, well, I thought it, that's it, what, it is... how they left it. No, 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 no. We'll see. I'm not a this Star is, Wars Oh, no. Junkie. <laughs> Lisa, oh, no. <laughs> okay, all right, never mind. You I'm just ruined gonna... the whole Rise I of really Skywalker. Did. No, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. They do. She must be his daughter. Then there, that is one that they everybody asked. that at the end of the movie. Yeah, there, that is the one that everybody asks okay. is, you know, do they finally resolve who Ray's parents are in this film? And okay. yes, they do. Okay. Yes, they do. I'm not going to say who they okay. are. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to be like Lisa over here. But... I, was, I haven't seen it. I was just assuming at the end of the movie last uh-huh. time they kind of mm-hmm. insinuated that that's who she was. Yeah, but they didn't openly say it. No, so... but I, I, we're not stupid over here. <laughs> hey, I never said that. Never. Never. Never okay. would I do that. All right. And then I heard that they um, they purposely put Princess Le- Prince Aaliyah in there where she didn't need to be for Carrie Fisher as a tribute. Is that true? Oh, no. She was no? in there very purposefully. Okay. She is one of the main characters, and it's interesting because she had passed. Yeah. J.J. Abrams did episode seven. He was an EP on episode eight. Uh, excited producer, but he didn't shoot anything. So he had right. a lot of footage left over from episode oh. seven of Carrie Fisher. Okay. And so he spliced and worked his magic. It had to be cool. And it's seamless. Yeah. It's seamless. It looks like she shot this movie. That's amazing. And it's fantastic. Yeah. I, th- I thought it was great. It, it's it's what I wanted to see of Carrie Fisher. I'll, okay. I'll put it that way. And it's what you wanted to see of the movie. I, uh, Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, for the most part. For the most part. Okay. It's one thing that kind of caught me off guard, and it's not a bad thing. Yeah. It is just Filled with action. Yeah. Filled from start to finish. It's oh, just good nonstop stuff. action. Yeah. It's amazing. It is not your typical Star Wars movie in that way. Okay. So how many how reels many are you going to give it out of five? All right. Remember, I'm a huge, huge yes. Star Wars fan, yeah. but I am critical of my love. <laughs> so, but I think this is decent. I think it's, I think it's appropriate. Okay. I give it four out of five reels. Four out of five reels. Yeah. All right. If Very you, good. if you are a Star Wars fan, you even like a little it. bit, you you need to go see it in the theaters because this is the end of an era. Yes, there are going to be more Star Wars movies in the future. Sure. But not this 40-year-old-plus saga. Okay. You got to right. see it. All right. And a rumor on the streets is you're going to see Cats over the weekend. What? <laughs> <laughs> Catch Matt on his podcast, Real Film Nerds Podcast. Thank you for coming in. Thanks, Lisa. This You're was welcome. fun.